In this tutorial, we're going to focus on scheduling in Clarizen. Look at the range of scheduling options available and see how using different options can affect the scheduling plans for your project. As a starting point, it's important to understand whether your project is driven by due date or by start date. This can be selected when your project is created or by going to the Project Properties and updating the Scheduling Constraint field. A useful technique to use is to build your project backwards, working towards a set due date, and to get your resources and scoping all finalized. When you're ready to activate the project and kick off the work, change the Scheduling Constraint field to ASAP and set your project baseline. To bring a task to completion, Clarizen needs to consider the following three factors. 1. Work. How much effort is required, in terms of working hours or days, to complete a task? 2. Duration. What is the time frame or available period, start and end date, to work on the task? 3. Unit. How many resources are available for working on the task, combined with a percentage of their working hours, during the time frame? In the end, we need to be able to assess how many people, units, must invest how many hours, work, over a specific period, duration, to complete the task according to plan. Usually, organizations estimate work in one of these ways, though in complex projects it is more common to use a variety of methods. One of the key things to understand when building out your project is work policy. If you have some previous experience with Microsoft Project, you may be familiar with task type, which is the equivalent. In Clarizen, work policy defines the relationship and behaviors between the three task and resource related characteristics duration, work, and resource units. While your organization's default work policy is defined by a Clarizen admin in the system settings, you can override the default policy at the project level and even at the individual task level. This gives you maximum flexibility when building out your project. In a nutshell, if the project duration is fixed, then when changing the work, the unit changes. If the project work is fixed, then when changing the unit, the duration changes. And if the unit is fixed, the duration and work affect one another. You've now seen how Clarizen Scheduling Engine calculates scheduling and load. However, our philosophy is that Clarizen can never know more than the project or work item manager, which means that any manually set values will always override system calculated values. You can easily see which items have been manually set in the work item grid views by the blue triangle icon at the top right corner of the relevant cell. The scheduling conflict indicator appears if there are collisions between scheduling rules. The likelihood of scheduling conflicts increases when dates are manually set by the user. When scheduling conflicts occur, the project manager needs to reschedule, crash some of the earlier tasks by adding more resources, or run some tasks in parallel. Rescheduling of an entire branch of tasks can be done by running the reschedule branch action. This gives you the option of restoring all defaults and will remove any manually set dates of any parent items and sub-items. To learn more about Clarizen, be sure to check out the other tutorials available in our training center and our wiki help site. We also highly recommend signing up for one of our daily live beginner or advanced webinars, where one of our Clarizen experts can answer any of your questions. If you haven't tried out Clarizen yet, be sure to do so with our free 30-day trial. Thanks for your interest in Clarizen. See you back soon.